Hey Garden Fam, it's your host Raven Epiphany. I hope you are doing well and having a wonderful day. I am back with another quick video. It's been a little minute. I have been working behind the scenes on some things that I'm so excited to share with you in due timing. But without further ado, let's get into the topic for today. So today's title is something along the lines of how to go from being a nice people pleaser to a kind God pleaser and people lover. Now you may say those sound like they're the same thing, you know, basically nice and kind are synonyms and people pleasing and people loving, those must be synonyms as well. And if I'm being nice, am I not being God pleasing? Like, but I'm gonna break down the nuanced difference between those two and, you know, kind of walk you through how you can go from being A to being B, which is more effective and will allow you to operate in more integrity. And so when you are people pleasing, you are essentially driven by other people's opinions or their perceived opinions. Cause sometimes you don't even know what they think. You just like, well, this is what people expect of me. And this is, you know, if I don't do this thing, they're gonna be mad or whatever else. Sometimes it's just perceived opinions. Um, but when you are a kind God people, God pleaser and people lover, you are principally driven, meaning you have a set of principles that you operate by, you have purpose that you operate by in every situation. And that is what drives you, that is what drives your actions. There's a subtle difference between the two because when you're a people pleaser, when you're driven by people's opinions or their perceived opinions, you can be swayed by you know anything that you think that people expect of you when you're principle and purpose driven however you are anchored in that principle and purpose but you are able to then flow and how that looks and shows up in various situations always being anchored in you know what you are actually sent into a situation to do or who you are actually meant to be in general etc when you are a nice people pleaser you often find that there is dissonance between what you want to do and what you actually end up doing so like internally there are things that you know that you either should be doing or that you actually want to do or don't want to do but you find yourself doing things that you really didn't want to do or not doing things that you really wanted to do because going back to the first point you are driven by people's opinions or what you perceive their opinions to be however when you position yourself as a kind God pleaser, people lover, it allows you to walk in the fullness of integrity. Now there is a subtle difference between being people pleasing and people loving. Love is something that's an action word. We know that. Love is something that goes deep. It's about wanting and seeking the highest and best for another person. When you seek to please a person, you may or may not be doing actions or not doing actions that actually seek to fulfill the highest and best option for that person. So for example, let's just go to a parent-child relationship because that's easy to you know paint this picture with. If you are a parent and you are being a people pleaser towards your child, you want to please them. You don't want them to be upset with you. They ask for cookies for breakfast every day, you know, and they don't want to eat any veggies or anything like that. If you're coming from a perspective of people pleasing, interacting with that child, then you'll be like, well, I don't want them to be mad at me. You know, I want to see them smile, you know, whatever else. So you give in and you allow them to eat cookies all day, every day, never eat their veggies. But that's not truly love because we know that veggies are needed <laughs> as nourishment in order for that child to grow, right? In order for that child to be at their highest and best, right? And so being a kind God pleaser and people lover in that situation would look like saying, hey, you know, maybe setting a time where the cookies can come, but saying, hey, actually, I made this other breakfast with love for you that I know you're going to love. You know, you put love into the breakfast you did make for them. Maybe you put some of their favorite things in there. Maybe you put some berries and some other things so they have some sweets, you know, there. Maybe you give them a granola bar along with the breakfast so that, you know, they have a little bit of the sweets they were looking for. But ultimately, you are, you know, putting forth actions that are for their highest and best good. Now, what about when you're operating with peers? You don't always have the choice to decide what's best for people and what's not. However, you decide how you want to contribute to that situation or not, right? And so, in let's say someone asks you for help with a, you know, with something. Being a people pleaser means that you have to do what they ask you to do, how they ask you to do it, when they ask you to do it, just so you can please them. However, being a kind people lover 
the love in that would mean that you offer the help that would enable them to be able to, you know, help them in the long run. So sometimes that doesn't look like doing the thing for them in the moment. Sometimes that looks like teaching them how to do it for themselves so that they are then able and empowered to go forth and do that thing in the future. Sometimes that looks like, hey, I can't do A, but I can do B. And ultimately, it's still fulfilling the highest and best for that person. And sometimes what people are asking for, you know, you're not able to give them, you know, realistically speaking, or, you know, uh, um, it doesn't make sense for you in that picture and they haven't thought of those other options. So it's okay to be a kind person, meaning you care about other people, you're compassionate towards other people, but in loving them, you think about, okay, what is the highest and best for that situation? When you're a people lover, it does not mean that you always have to be self-sacrificing. There are times when, yes, we sacrifice our good for the good of others, but when you're a people-pleasing person, you are in consistent self-sacrifice mode to fulfill other people's opinions which are swaying every day you know which sway all the time when you allow yourself to be kind and a people lover those principles and that purpose that drives you every day is what helps you to make decisions and how you want to show up for other people and it allows you to really think about how can i best help this person in this situation how can i best love this person in the situation that actually you know goes after their highest and best good you know I always like to bring this back to the Bible as much as possible. So there's two situations that came to mind when I was preparing for this video. One of them being a scripture that I have, you know, chatted about in previous times. And this is, you know, uh, where Jesus, you know, goes away to pray in the morning and his disciples come to him and they're like, hey, like everybody was looking for you. Where have you been? And he's basically like, hey. We're going to go to this next place and we are going to, you know, basically chat with them there. We're going to preach to them there because that's the reason we ultimately came. And so let me tell you what scripture that actually is. Just so if you want to go back and read it for yourself, then you can. That's Mark 1, 35 through 38. He said, now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place. And there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is looking for you. But he said to them. Let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also, because for this purpose, I have come forth. So what is that? That is Jesus being principle and purpose driven. It means that there were people that were expecting him to be at a certain place and do a certain thing at a certain time. But that did not align with the purpose for which he was, you know, sent out in the moment. It did not align with the highest and best for even the people he was sent to. He knew that his next assignment had to go forth and he had already spent time in this specific town with those people and poured out the love, poured out the purpose, poured out the principle that he came there for. And now it was time to move forward. If he had been a people pleaser in that situation, it would have meant not loving on the people in the next situation. And so even him going away in the morning while people were looking for him was him being a people lover because that was a place in which he was filled in order to pour out to the next, you know, the next place. The next thing that came to mind, and this goes back to the idea of helping people and kind of determining what is the best way for me to help them. You know, I know we've heard this uh, phrase before, which can also be a way that helps you to move from people pleasing to people loving. You know, if you teach someone to fish, they're going to have to come back to you for the next day to eat. Right. But if you sorry, if you give someone a fish, they're going to come back to you the next day in order to eat. However, if you teach someone to fish, then they will then be able to eat every day on their own that is people loving people pleasing says they expect me to give them a fish i guess i gotta give them a fish and now i gotta set myself up every day to make sure i'm able to give them a fish teaching someone to fish is actually the kind and loving thing to do because it empowers them to go forth and love on themselves in the way that they need and to fulfill the need that they came to you for and so we see this in a way when we look at um how jesus healed the man at the pool of bethesda and so the man had been there for i think it was 38 years he had basically been a beggar there had been like this pool that stirred up every now and then and the first person that got in there got healed he never was able to make it because, you know, he, you know, was not able to get there first. And so Jesus comes along and he asked him, he said, do you want to be made well? And the sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But I, when I, while I'm coming, another steps down before me. And then Jesus says to him, arise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well and took up his bed and walked. 
in that situation, Jesus didn't say, oh, well, pity on you. You know, he didn't have pity for the man. He had compassion for the man, which is, again, a subtle difference. So it's going to sound like synonyms, but there, there is a nuanced difference between the two. By pitying him, he may have just given him money, you know, like everyone else did. By pitying him, he may have just, you know, gotten to a pity party with him. But by having compassion on him, he said, hey, I'm going to empower you to go forward and come out of this place, which is exactly what happened. There's another passage that I did not pull up this time where Jesus actually asked someone like, what do you want me to do for you? Like, do you want to be made whole? This person had been a beggar for all of these years and Jesus asked him like, hey, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be healed? Because ultimately, sometimes, you know, people can come and they want that immediate treatment, but they don't necessarily want to be empowered to go forth and be made well. They want you to give them a fish. But they don't necessarily want to be taught how to fish because then that means, oh, wow, like I'm no longer in this low place. I no longer have this like, you know, this I can't sit in this pity party for myself anymore. And Jesus loving on him, he decided not to give him the fish. He decided to give him the thing that would allow him to be able to fish, which is asking him, hey, you know, you can be able to fish and feed yourself every day, right? Do you want that ultimately? And sometimes we have to make that decision in being kind and not nice and say like, hey, this is what I have to offer. I can't offer you the fish right now. However, I can offer you to teach you how to fish so that you can be able to fish daily and feed yourself and, you know, move forward. I am able to give you this, this part of the journey that will connect to what you need in order to, you know, seek your highest and best. That's what I have to offer. Do you want that? And, and people pleasing, sometimes we can feel like if people say, no, I don't want that, that then we have to shape shift and give them whatever else it is that they are asking for in the moment. And people loving, we are able to say, hey, when you are ready for this thing, this is what I have to offer. And I know that what I have to offer will be the thing, be one of the things at least that empowers you to be able to seek your highest and best. And so when we are being kind, God pleasers, people lovers, we are able to operate from a place of principle. We are able to operate from a place of purpose. We are able to serve people's highest and best good. We are able to operate in the purpose that God has given us and ultimately be pleasing to him and not swayed by people's opinions because people's opinions bring a snare. And ultimately when you're being people pleasing, when you find yourself always having to be nice, it'll feel like a trap. It feels like you always have to be doing what other people want you to do. And what other people want you to do is not always aligned with what God wants you to do, nor does it always align with what would be for their highest and best good. And so with that in mind, the way you go from being a nice people pleaser to a kind people lover is you move from nice to kind. You move from pity to compassion. You move from fulfilling people's opinions to thinking and considering their highest and best you know, what would be best for their highest and best uh, end goal. And you move in that way. You also, when you are being nice, you don't consider yourself at all. You know, the Bible says to love others as yourself. That means that you don't consistently on every occasion have to completely disregard yourself in order to help others. And so going from niceness to kindness allows you to consider what can I realistically offer in this situation? Even if it's sacrificial, you're able to consider yourself in that picture. What am I realistically able to offer in that situation? And how can that thing that I have to offer be for that other person's highest and best good? You're able to consider both when you go from niceness to kindness. And then lastly, you're able to move in authenticity and integrity. When you are being a people pleaser, you just shape shift into what people want you to be in the moment and you're never truly yourself. When you anchor yourself in true identity and in true authenticity and in true integrity, you're able to move forth from that place and show up as you in those situations, show up with your principles and your values and your purpose in that situation and be able to move again in the way that ultimately suits other people's highest and best good. You are not blown with the wind based on what people expect you to do. You are able to, you know, love on them enough to show up in the ways that you're able to show up in the ways that you are wired that also serve their highest and best good. So I hope that that made a bit of sense to whoever it needed to help. Niceness is not a fruit of the spirit. <laughs> However, kindness is, you know, grace is, love is. And so that is the way we want to operate. When we look at Jesus's example, he wasn't about 
trying to just, you know, um, fulfill what everybody expected of him. He was looking to fulfill what God had sent him there to do, which ultimately would lead to fulfilling other people's needs in love. And so hope that helps. Hope that sets you free from the bondage of being nice being a people pleaser, etc. Because honestly, when you're being a people pleaser, as we saw in that example in Mark with Jesus, if he had been a people pleaser, he would not have gotten to where he was supposed to go, right? So when you're being a people pleaser, it may seem like you're doing something. It may seem like you're moving forward. It may seem like you're, you know, you're getting stuff done, but ultimately you are hiding, you are procrastinating, you are uh, um, delaying you being able to fulfill the purpose for which you were ultimately sent for in every situation, your larger purpose and the purpose in every single individual situation. So hope that helps. You guys know that I love you bunches. Please like, subscribe, and share with your tribe. I know that it rhymes and it sounds good, but I'm actually asking you to click that like button, you know, subscribe to the channel and share with your people, whoever you think it may help. And I will talk to you soon. God willing, love you.